Welcome to Atmos 5000 Day 5. Our objectives are Chapter 3, Section 3.1 of the Stoll Textbook, focusing in on internal energy, phase changes, and the latent energy storage and release that happens during those phase changes. Starting off with internal energy. Uh, internal energy is just the sum of the molecular scale, microscopic, kinetic, and potential energy. Recall that kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and we actually measure the kinetic energy uh, as uh, temperature, and we call this sensible energy. And the potential energy is actually composed of the nuclear energy of the subatomic bonds, which hold the atoms together, the chemical energy, which is the energy of the bonds that are holding atoms together to form molecules, and the latent energy, which is the energy of the bonds holding molecules together. And chemistry is mostly focused in on chemical energy. Nuclear physics is often looking at nuclear energy, and, and for the most part, uh, those energy exchanges are not something that is relevant to the atmosphere. But what is relevant to the atmosphere is the energy of these bonds between molecules uh, known as latent energy. Here we have a phase change diagram for water. Uh, on the x-axis, we have energy in kilojoules per kilogram. And on the y-axis, we have temperature in degrees Celsius. So we're starting off on the extreme left at a very cold temperature, minus 200 degrees Celsius. And at that temperature, the water will clearly be ice. And uh, if we add energy to uh, the substance, uh, it will cause the ice to warm up and it will continue to warm up until it reaches the melting point at zero degrees Celsius, at which point the melting will occur. And during the melting process, it requires energy to break those bonds between the molecules. Uh, <clears throat> and that energy is referred to as the latent heat of fusion. And then once the melting has commenced and the temperature has uh, basically remained constant during the melting process, and it's all liquid at this point, um, we can continue adding energy and the temperature will increase. And the temperature will increase until we reach 100 degrees C. And at 100 degrees C, uh, the uh, water will begin evaporating. And we'll keep putting energy into the system to move that evaporation. And the amount of energy that we're putting in there is L sub V, which is the latent heat of vaporization. And then once we have evaporated all of the liquid into the vapor phase, uh, if we keep adding energy to the system, we'll increase the um, temperature, uh, AKA the kinetic energy um, of the gas. So the things to note are that the temperature remains constant during the phase changes of melting and evaporation, and the latent energy is stored and released during those phase changes. And during the other time periods when the gas or the solid or the liquid is changing temperature, uh, the sensible energy is stored or released as the temperature of the single phase warms or cools. So nomenclature that we use for changes of phase, if you want to start over on the left, we have our solid, which is ice. And uh, as we move to the right, we have our liquid, and then we have our vapor. Uh, <clears throat> the transitions between ice and liquid is known as melting. The transition between liquid and vapor is known as evaporation. And the transition directly from ice to vapor without going through the liquid phase is known as sublimation. Uh, the most common way that people are familiar with the process of sublimation is what happens to dry ice or carbon dioxide ice when it's exposed to the atmosphere. It will move directly to the vapor without leaving a puddle of liquid as it does the phase transition. All of these phase changes moving from left to right 
require energy to break the bonds between the molecules. So for example, in the ice, we have a very tight lattice structure. Um, in order to turn this into liquid, we have to break those bonds uh, and make the, uh, the lattice uh, go away. And for liquid, we have to uh, break the, the hydrogen bonds that are holding it together uh, in order to turn it into a gas. If we go from the reverse, from the right to the left, uh, we're moving from vapor to liquid, that process is known as condensation. If we move from liquid to ice, that process is known as freezing. And if you go directly from vapor to ice without going through liquid first, we refer to that as deposition. The two ways that you're probably most familiar with the, the process of deposition is frost forming on the grass at night when the temperature is below freezing. It's not like you have liquid on the grass that then freezes. It's often just deposited directly in the ice phase um, as frost. Um, you can also often see the deposition of ice inside a freezer. If it's a, not a frost-free freezer, you'll see ice buildup inside the freezer, and that is going through the process of deposition. And since uh, in each of these, we're becoming uh, from a less ordered to a more ordered um, system. In order to uh, do that, you have to release energy uh, in order for those molecules to calm down and to uh, start moving into these uh, lattice structures uh, of ice. So everything that's moving from right to left gives off energy in order for that phase change to occur. These latent energies are summarized in Table 3-1 in the Stoll textbook. Uh, we have the latent heat of uh, evaporation or the latent heat of condensation, which are collectively referred to as the latent heat of vaporization. Uh, that's 2.5 times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram. We have the latent heat of fusion, which is uh, for either uh, freezing or melting. That's 3.34 times 10 to the fifth. It's almost an order of magnitude less than the latent heat of vaporization. And then we have uh, down below, we have the latent heat of deposition or sometimes called the latent heat of sublimation, uh, which is 2.83 times 10 to the sixth joules per kilogram. And uh, the latent heat of deposition is greater than the latent heat of vaporization, which is greater than the latent heat of fusion. And another thing which we'll gloss over in this class, but you'll see in subsequent classes, is that these uh, latent energies are a weak function of temperature. If we want to summarize the latent heat and storage, uh, we can do that by using this quantity delta Q, where Q is that uh, energy storage, and delta Q is equal to L, which is our latent heat energy, uh, times the uh, change in the mass of the water that is actually going through the phase change. So we have this generic equation, delta Q is equal to L times delta M, water. And that L uh, will differ depending upon what type of phase change you're actually dealing with. Uh, so for uh, melting and freezing, you'd use LF. For evaporation and condensation, you'd use LV. And for sublimation deposition, um, you would use LD. And the sign on the latent heat storage or release will depend upon the direction uh, of the phase change.